Alright, so this is my first video in honestly quite a while. I've changed a lot since my last online YouTube presence, so just forget about some of the old juvenile things I once made videos about. Also, this is probably one of your first times hearing my voice. Hi, I'm Nintendo 110 Welcome to my channel. On this channel, I'll now be talking about robots. A lot. Among other things, which I'll probably get to later. But for now, robots. Which is why I'd like for my first new video to be about my personal favorite robot, the Sony Ibo. Now, for those who don't know, the Sony Ibo was a popular robotic dog around the late 90s and early 2000s. No, no, I'm not talking about those toy robot dogs Techno and Poochie and the other 15 million toy robot dogs. I'm talking about Ibo, which wasn't a toy at all and was never aimed towards children but instead aimed towards programmers and college students as a Swiss army knife of possibilities, but also towards the aging citizens of Japan as a robotic pet slash partner. Hence why Ibo stands partly for Artificial Intelligence Robot, and also partly for the Japanese word Aibao, meaning partner. Alright, to start off Ibo's history, first let me say I'm speaking exclusively about Ibo. Other Sony robots, such as Curio and Roly, will come later on in my documentary series, I'm sure. So the beginning of Ibo was 1993. Sony started off by making a spider monkey robot which could track, chase, and kick a small yellow ball. The robot was named Mutant. Considering how many people are afraid of robots, you can probably see why they did not stick with this name for very long. All was well, but Sony wasn't satisfied with the design or the product. So they came up with more designs, and for the time being, Ibo went by the name Four-Legged Entertainment Robot. Fast forward to 1996, when a new prototype was made. This one looked more like a dog, and was shiny and sleek. It also played soccer, of course. The soccer-playing robot kicked off the new game, RoboCup, in 1997, and inspired other people and companies to build teams of robots, humanoid and four-legged, that could track and kick a ball as well. Finally, on May 11th of 1999, after a new design had been created by Sony and science fiction erotica designer Hajime Soriyama, the Ibo ERS-110 was revealed. It was a limited edition model, of which Sony kept in close contact with consumers. Any reported problems with this model would be fixed in a later model, which would be released worldwide. Not only did ERS-110 include the ball tracking camera and four jointed legs that the prototypes had, but it also had an artificial intelligence system that learned from the world around it. It grew from a puppy stage and slowly learned how to move and communicate as it evolved into a mature dog. Now I know when I say the first AI robot, you think Furby, but you're wrong. Furby was an AI robot and was released a year before Ibo, but Furby was aimed towards children and didn't get the chance to fully embrace the true AI learning. Furby was very, very limited in terms of learning and interaction. Also worth adding is the fact that Ibo costed $2,500 at the time, which was a pretty decent price considering all the things it could do. The very small amount of ERS-110s sold out within a day. Later in 1999, Sony realized how quickly the small amount of ERS-110 units sold out and decided to update the body and software with a worldwide model. The new model was called ERS-111, and was released in unlimited numbers to the US, Japan, and the UK. Neither the ERS-110 nor ERS-111 were ever sold in stores. They were only available from the Sony website. ERS-111 sold on Sony.com until early 2000. Next, in late 2000, the ERS-210 was revealed. It was released to the public in December of 2000 and sold more units than any other IBO model. It improved upon all the features of the ERS-110 and ERS-111, along with adding voice recognition. It costed $1,500, but software and accessories were sold separately this time. This IBO model was available worldwide and was sold in a few big-name stores, but was never sold in Walmart or anything. <laughs> Next, in mid-2001, the ERS-311, also known as Latte, and ERS-312, also known as Macaron, were released. These models costed around $800 to $900 and had the same features as the ERS-210, but didn't have as many possible personality outcomes and weren't quite as intelligent. They had a cuter look and supposedly were aimed more towards young females. But hey, that's not coming from me. 
I guess it's safe to say the ERS-311 and ERS-312 were kind of like a poodle when it comes to Ivo. In late 2001, the ERS-220 was released. It had a science fiction look, and while it used the same softwares as the ERS-210, it implemented them in totally different ways. It was very unique. It costed around the same amount as the ERS-210. If I'm not mistaken, around 2005, the ERS-31L was released. It was similar to the 311 and 312, but had a different face. It looked more like a pug or bulldog. Software-wise, it wasn't much different. It also costed a little bit less than the 311 and 312. Last, in 2003, was the ERS-7. It had touch sensors, face recognition, charging station docking, along with all the other things other models had. And it could speak several languages. Human languages. It costed the same as the ERS-210. It had three different softwares, each of which added on a bit to its personality. The ERS-7 was known for being the most sophisticated and recognized IBO model, but sadly, it was the last, before the cancellation in 2006. After 2006, IBO support soon ended. Not much was heard about it for 11 years. Many IBO owners were upset over losing their family pets. Parts were hard to come by, and not many people were able to repair them. Even today, this is still happening, but more people are stepping up and learning how to repair these dogs. Despite popular demand, Sony did not bring back repairs of the old dogs, but instead introduced a new dog in November of 2017, ERS-1000. It had a new, cuter design, OLED eyes, could connect to a smartphone app, and stored files in the cloud. Tech websites went crazy over this information. ERS-1000 was finally released to Japan in January of 2018, and America in November of 2018. Along with a three-year plan for cloud connection, ERS-1000 costed around $3,000. Now, that about sums it up for the history of Ibo. Hopefully I didn't forget any important details. I'm sure I'll be witch-hunted if so. I must mention that Ibo has never had any true competition. Yes, toy companies have made toy robots that have tried to be like Ibo, and some actually made some pretty decent products, but Ibo was a companion slash entertainment robot. The only other robots that have managed to get even close to the formula sadly didn't stay in production for a long time. Maybe since ERS-1000 is around, we'll see more competitors come into the ring. I hope you like my video, and I really hope that you'll want me to make more. Comment if you feel like I've left anything out, and maybe I can try to update this video sometime soon with any information I may have left out. Alright, uh, I guess like and subscribe if you want to. I'm not going to force anybody to, and I'll see you in the next video.